wherever they are, everybody, let's rally around each other to make sure that the right thing is done. Can I mention that we have vaccination that is going on? We have all of that polio campaign was going on in some parts of the country. And it affected it. And that was a lot of money that had been invested already in terms of preparation. We have measles coming up, measles vaccination. Do you know that about 15 children in the world die every hour from measles? It's a lot of deaths. And we have a period where seasonal transmission is going to increase. We are ahead of that season. This is a time for protection. Even if deaths and mortality rates are, even if it's 1%, if that 1% happens in your own house, in my own house, to us in the house, for us in the house, it's 100%. For a woman who has an only child, it's 100%. And that's what we must rise against. We must say, no, let's not get ourselves into this. Let's not waste the money that people have given us, people have made available to us for our own good and for the benefit of our children. You know, Dr. Noka, thank you. But uh, let's, uh, let's bring in Dr. Adamu here. Dr. Adamu, in Nassau State, he's talked yeah. about separating the need to stay healthy from the news out there. The question is, how is it that the people got to that point where they got panicky? Is it a failure of communication or a failure of a system somewhere? What went wrong that led to that point where people are now withdrawing their children and the vaccination um, events that have already been scheduled were affected? Well, um... I, I think that um, it's a combination of both, but um, if you look at the political uh, atmosphere in the country currently, a um, lot of suspicions, a lot of issues coming up, um, that has contributed in no in, in immense way in facilitating this. Ordinarily, um, like in, uh, the polio uh, campaign that is ongoing in the state or just ended in the state, there are things uh, or other immunization exercises or activities that have been ongoing all through a lot, uh, lot of years back. So people should ordinarily be aware or uh, uh, should aware of the, the, the proceedings. They know that these things are ongoing. These things come year in, year out. We have always, always been doing this and they've not been associated with any particular um, issue until this current one that coincided with the outbreak of the monkeypox. So I think um, uh, politics played a, a lot of role into it and I, and, and I also think that um, we as health workers or health providers need also to communicate more with the communities. We need to be in touch with them always. We need to keep talking to them so that they understand that these, things, these are two distinct entities. What is the connection between polio uh, immunization, for instance, and monkeypox? They are not caused by the same agent. And the, ordinarily, if people don't want to, if not because people want to play, play politics with serious events, this issue shouldn't even have arisen in the first place. Now, having seen this, um, I think that for us in Nassau State, going forward, we will, um, before any a, a particular event comes up, we will have to talk and talk and talk with our people. Uh, using all the uh, various channels, we know the rules the traditional rulers have, we know the rules religious leaders have, we know the rules of politi that political lead leaders have. And we'll go down to the grassroots and have a robust communication with these people so that everybody knows and we're all on the same page. Giving vaccination is the, one of the most cost-effective ways of preventing illnesses. And for diseases that we have that are vaccine preventable, it's a wonderful opportunity that we have. Monkeypox, for instance, we don't have a current vaccine for monkeypox. Monkeypox doesn't even have a cure. It is only said that people that are vaccinated uh, uh, for smallpox have some level of protection because of um, the, uh, the, the antigenic similarity between um, the monkeypox and the smallpox virus. So there's really no connection and no reason why people will have to withdraw their children or prevent their children from getting the needed vaccine. And I think that um, we need to separate political uh, issues from reality on ground. But Dr. Adamu, uh, is this not arising from a lack of trust in the government? You say you're going to engage at the grassroots level and you're going to talk and talk and talk. But are you confident that the people are going to listen 
and actually believe all the talking that you're going to do. Absolutely. At least for Nassau State, I am very sure they are going to listen and they are going to believe because we have, um, we, we, we have a, 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 a long-term a long relationship going forward. We have established trust and confidence. And I think that even if the, the, the few cases of rejection that were recorded were also resolved on the field. So it's not as if um, there, are people, there are children that, 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 were, that, that have uh, gone on in nice. Yes, there were challenges in pockets of places, but our teams went around and resolved those issues out in the field. So the trust, the, the belief, the confidence they had in us in the past is what we're going to piggyback on and, uh, and intensify these communication efforts. <sighs> Intensifying communication efforts, that would really be fantastic. Um, Dr. Anoka, let's look at the healthcare, primary healthcare delivery system in the country. I mean, is it what it should be? I mean, going forward, if we're going to be looking at the grassroots, Dr. Adam mentioned going down to the grassroots and communicating, having conversations with the people. The primary health care centers are supposed to help make communications with the people at the rural areas a lot easier. And indeed, I mean, growing up in the village, I grew up in the village, I knew that we could go to what we call the maternity, which was a primary health care center in my village, to go and get whatever drugs we needed, or to get whatever vaccines we needed. Are they even functioning that now we have to take the vaccine to the people? The people used to be able to come to the uh, primary health care center. Are they up as they should be? Thanks, Nyota. Um, they are not um, as they should be, and we know that very well. But there's a lot of effort being made to bring them to what they should be. A lot of deliveries that should happen in this country should happen at the primary health care facilities. Immunization, and then the basic services. Indeed, a lot of the services that we receive in hospitals, including the general hospitals and the teaching hospitals, should actually be at the primary health care facility. And then you also should have the community system around that facility, supporting it, providing things, and then making sure that the health workers are doing what they should do. Now, that hasn't been the case. Okay. Dr. Noka, please hold, please hold your at thoughts. At the moment. Can you just hold your yeah. thoughts? When we come back, you, you tidy up on the primary health care centers. We'll take a short break and we'll be back shortly. Welcome back. Dr. Noka, you were talking about the primary health care centers and what they should be. Yes, um, very well. Yes? The executive director of the National Primary Health Care Agency has been working with the states under the leadership, under the guidance of the Honorable Minister of Health, Professor Adeole, to see that there is at least one functional primary health care facility in every ward in this country. What we have done at the moment is to list these primary health care facilities and then to make them a focus for interventions. We want to see that the infrastructure is at the minimum best and that the human resources that are needed are there. You need the midwives. You need the, uh, you know, the health, the other health workers, to make sure that they are there. And then the medicines that you need are also available. And then that the place is a place where you can keep vaccines, which means that it needs power supply, in some way. And of course, that the place also is able to, um, you know, has water. And so there are things like issues around boreholes. And importantly, to also see that you can pick data from there, information, and transmit upwards. Now, that is going on. You remember that the um, Mr. President commissioned one of such facilities in January this year. And a lot of activities have followed from that. 
there are states that are involved in renovation and then the federal government is also involved in renovation of these facilities that we've talked about. And then all of the other aspects, we are doing everything possible to bring together so that we can start counting them off. That, of course, is the only way that Nigeria can move forward towards universal health coverage. There's a lot of discussions around it, but you cannot achieve universal health coverage in Nigeria if you don't fix the primary health care facilities. If you don't get primary health care right, you cannot make progress with universal coverage in any state and in the country as a whole. So there's a lot of energy in that direction. And then on the other side of it is getting the people who need the services back to the facilities. And that's why we've been working on the, you know, on, on, on the program, a community intervention program to harmonize the activities that happen at that level through the community health influencers, promoters and services program. All right, thank so you. that we can, you know, get information from people, provide the basic services and get them back to the facility. So those are the things that we are doing and then to strengthen immunization. Immunization right. is something that people always rally around. Thank you, you very much. You may have heard, you may be aware that... <laughs> Dr. Anoka, I'm afraid we'll have to <laughs> hang the conversation there. Thank you so much. And thank you for sharing your thoughts, Dr. Chima Anoka, Technical Advisor to the Executive Director of the National Public Health Care Development Agency, and Dr. Ibrahim Adamu, Director of Public Health, Nasarawa State. Thank you both for sharing your thoughts with us. Sunrise will be back in a moment. Thank you. Please don't go away.